grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You may be seated. Nathan and Laura have come to make their marriage vows in the presence of God and of this gathering today. The uniting of this man and this woman in heart, body, and mind is intended by God for their mutual joy, for the help and comfort they give one another in prosperity and adversity, and that their love may be a blessing to all whom they encounter. Let us now witness their promises to each other and surround them with our prayers, giving thanks to God for the gift of marriage and asking God's blessings upon them that they may be strengthened for their life together and nurtured in the love of God. Nathan, will you receive Laura as your wife and bind yourself to her in the covenant of marriage? Will you promise to love and honor her in true devotion, to rejoice with her in times of gladness, to grieve with her in times of sorrow, and to be faithful to her as long as you both shall live. I will. Laura, will you receive Nathan as your husband and bind yourself to him in the covenant of marriage? Will you promise to love and honor him in true devotion, to rejoice with him in times of gladness, to grieve with him in times of sorrow, and to be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? I will. Let us pray. Gracious God, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, into the world to reveal your love to all people. Enrich Laura and Nathan with every good gift, that their life together may show forth your love, and grant that at the last we may all celebrate with Christ the marriage feast that has no end. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 through 13, it says these words. Two are better than one, because they have good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Also, if the two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be over overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Usually at this point, I kind of ask you guys to relax, but knowing Nathan, he's pretty relaxed. Right? <laughs> Nathan, it seems like uh, this, yesterday, I was 10 years old, sitting in my grandmother's house and getting a phone call in December that you were born. And uh, being the only two grandsons in this family, it's kind of a, you're kind of like a brother to me. So it's kind of an honor and a blessing to stand here before you guys and be a part of the sweating. <laughs> and uh, I remember us wrestling every time we got together on the floors in our grandparents' house. I remember coming to visit you in, at your parents' house in Colorado multiple times as your baby wrestling with you on the floor and quickly that changed <laughs> because you outgrew me very quick. <laughs> And I don't think I will wrestle you on the floor any longer. I think the last time I did that, you choked me out. <laughs> yep, I'm about right. <laughs> and Laura, um, we have a running joke in our family. There's two things that you can do to be a part of the Gray's family, and that is to be very musically inclined and be able to survive a camping trip. <laughs> and uh, you've done both of those. But more importantly, all joking aside, what we saw, what I saw, what my family saw, what my three little girls saw, is being with you is that there's a love between you guys that no one can take away. And quite honestly, it should be looked upon in a lot of other people's relationships as the example to live by. And so when I say that, I'm reminded of what the definition of love is. Because I see this in you too. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy and it does not boast. It is not proud and it is not rude. It is not self-seeking and is not easily angered. 
It keeps no records of any wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Love always protects. Love will always trust, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I, t I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these, as we see in you guys, is love. Chris, thank you for uh, sharing in this ministry today. Uh, Chris is a pastor of New Church in Georgetown, Texas. And as you've probably already gathered, if you did not know, is cousin to me. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. A reading for you on this day, on your wedding day. Jesus said, you are, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The Gospel of our Lord. <clears throat> let your light so shine before others. You can't see their faces, but their lights are shining. Uh, with warmth and smiles and I trust with a gratitude that this moment is now here. Let your light so shine before others. Uh, good words for all of us. Uh, good words for a bride and groom, a husband and wife. For you, Nathan, and for you, Laura, together. Let your light shine before others. Not to sound presumptuous, but I would like to say there is a welcoming quality to your relationship with a care for listening, an easy and warm humor, timing ever so perfect. I've watched you interact with one another and a graceful playfulness all around. I can say that there is plenty of room for people to enter into your lives. And surrounding you today are many people who are entering this moment in your lives. We are glad for what you have together, what you are sharing and what you are becoming, how you are growing, and we are glad for how you share it with us, with others, with your family, with your friends. The light that shines forth today is clearly on the lampstand. I don't know what your lampstands will look like, but I imagine a lampstand here that sits pretty high, maybe as high as those vases and flowers before the congregation today. Yes, your light is clearly on a lampstand. It is nothing less than the brilliant light of God's love shining through you, through your personalities, and through your character, and through the promises that you are about to make to become husband and wife. It is a light. It is a light that brings joy to the very ordinary gifts of family and friendship, the life of the church. I can say on the basis of this gospel text today, there are no bushel baskets large enough that can cover or hide all we celebrate and are thankful for today. It is here for all to see. In our scene, in taking notice of that light in and through you and your love, and in our participation in this day, Nathan and Laura know 
know that we too feel the very presence of the light that is Christ among us and in the world. You remind us that the light and love that shines forth today is a light and a love that you will walk in each and every day that we share in together as people of faith. I think you're doing a pretty good job of it, but it is really hard to wrap our arms around moments like this, to take it all in, to gather it all up. That is why we take lots of pictures, because there'll be parts of it that maybe you did not notice, but later on, in looking back on them and remembering, there will be, aha. We mark today really as a marvelous beginning and are filled with nothing less than expectation of all that is yet to unfold for you. We are truly excited for you and for your love, for your marriage, and all that it will become. A long time after today, you will be talking about your wedding, and you will be dwelling in the memories, and there are plenty of guests here today that will help you do exactly that. We can trust for sure. So the words Jesus spoke to the disciples back there on the mountain, we say again on your wedding day, Laura and Nathan, let your light so shine before others. You know the discipline it takes to excel in a sport and to do well, to remain physically active and to contribute to the team. For you then, the words, let your light so shine before others, well, they will sound like pretty good coaching. Let your light so shine before others that they might see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. A holy and marvelous purpose planted in the very midst of your lives as husband and wife. This light, we say, is a light for all seasons, a light for understanding one another, a light for forgiveness, a light for generosity. It is a light that shows us forward with hope and imagination and even courage toward others, toward service in the world. To let your light shine is to simply live in the identity of who you already are as children of God. To let your light shine is to live in commitment and care daily for one another and all that God has entrusted you with. To let your light shine is to live in your promises and to let them shape your identity as husband and wife day in and day out over and over again as a wonderful surprise and that which is worthy of always taking great delight. So Nate and Laura, I invite you to declare your vows to one another now. Are you ready? Oh. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Say, it. <laughs> Say it good and loud. So okay. Vocalize. Yeah, right. Vocalize. Okay. 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 <laughs> I, Nathan. I, Nathan. Give myself to you, Laura. Give myself to you, Laura. By the grace of God. By the grace of God. I promise to support and care for you. I promise to support and care for you. In the love of Christ. In the love of Christ. I promise to love and cherish you. I promise to love and cherish you. With the Spirit's help. With the Spirit's help. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. I, Laura. I, Laura. Give myself to you. Give myself to you, Nathan. By the grace of God. By the grace of God. I promise to support and care for you. I promise to support and care for you. In the love of Christ. In the love of Christ. I promise to love and cherish you. I promise to love and cherish you. With the Spirit's help. With the Spirit's help. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God of grace, for your love and faithfulness to your people. May these rings be symbols of the promise Laura and Nathan have made with each other through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. <laughs> and that was the best name.
got to hike up my pants now. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> we're good. We're good. Let's, okay. <laughs> yeah. We take her. I'm first. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get our composure, okay? I'm first. Well, you're first. All right. And you'll say, Laura, I give you this ring. Laura, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my vow. As a symbol of my vow. With all that I am. With all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Nathan, I give you this ring. Nathan, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my vow. As a symbol of my vow. With all that I am. With all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Laura and Nathan, by their promises before God and in the presence of this assembly, have joined themselves to one another as husband and wife. Those whom God has joined together, let no one separate. We say amen and thanks be to God. We were supposed to step up. It's our fault. We were supposed to step up. It's our fault. <laughs> O gracious God, we give thanks for tender love and sending Jesus Christ to come among us, to be born of a human mother, and to endure the cross for our sake, that we may have abundant life. By the power of the Holy Spirit, pour out the abundance of your blessing on cousin Nate and my new cousin Laura. Defend them for every enemy. Lead them into all peace. Let your love be a seal upon their hearts, a mantle upon their shoulders, and a crown upon their foreheads. Bless them so that their lives together may bear witness to your love. Bless them in their work and in their companionship, in their sleeping and in their waking, in their joys and in their sorrows, in their life and in their death. May Nathan's, Nathan and Laura's marriage be an example of their commitment and their covenant with God. So when others live in life, live life next to them, walk beside them, live in community with them, that they may say Jesus in everything they do. In all we do, may we share the love of Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, and the glory of the one true God, now and forever. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand as Chris leads us in the prayers of intercession. After each prayer, uh, we will respond as a congregation together. Hear our prayer. Shake it, shake it. On this day of rejoicing, let us bless God for divine love through his son, Jesus Christ. We praise you, O God, for the joy that Nate and Laura have found in each other. And we pray that their love and faithfulness may reflect your gracious love and enrich our common life. 
Gracious and faithful God, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Give them gentleness and patience, affection and understanding, readiness to, to trust one another, and when they hurt each other, grace to acknowledge their fruit, fault and to give and receive forgiveness. Gracious and faithful God, hear our prayer. Use us to support Nate and Laura in their lives together. Give us such a sense of your constant love that we may employ all of our strength in the life of praise of you. Gracious and faithful God, hear our prayer. Strengthen and bless friends and family gathered here, even as we call to mind those who are absent from us. Console those who mourn the loss of the loved ones and be present with those whom love is a stranger. Gracious and faithful God, hear our prayer. Look graciously on the world that you may have, that you made and for which your son gave his life. Strengthen marriages, families, and communities everywhere. Defend and guide all who suffer, want, and anxiety. Gracious and faithful God, hear our prayer. Most gracious God, you have made us in your image and given us over to one another's care. Hear the prayers of your people, that unity may overcome division. Hope vanquish despair, and joy conquer sorrow. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may God Almighty send you light and truth to keep you all the days of your life. The hand of God protect you. The holy angels accompany you, and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. It is with great joy that I introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Nathan Graves' husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. <laughs>